Hello, my name is Charlie Heaps and I'm a senior scientist at the Stockholm Environment Institute and I'm lead developer of LEAP, the Low Emissions Analysis Platform. Over the past five years, SEI has been working with the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, the US Environmental Protection Agency and researchers such as Davin Henzer at the University of Colorado to develop a new part of LEAP called IBC, the Integrated Benefits Calculator. IBC is designed to help examine the health, crop and climate impacts of future energy and emissions pathways. The tool is particularly focused on the needs of planners working in developing countries and particularly those in national ministries of environment and energy. Today, I want to give you a brief introduction to some of the theory behind LEAP and IBC and to show you how they actually work together in practice. I will start off with a few slides and then we will switch over to show LEAP IBC in operation. First of all, what is LEAP? LEAP is a Windows-based platform for energy, climate mitigation and air pollution abatement planning, which has been developed over the last 30 years by the Stockholm Environment Institute. LEAP has been widely applied in over 190 countries. At least 38 used it to help develop their nationally developed contributions to the Paris Climate Agreement, the NDCs. LEAP is a scenario-based modeling tool that explores how emissions may change in the future under alternative policy settings, for example, a baseline or a low emission development scenario. LEAP is typically used at the national scale, but also works for cities, regions, and multi-country analyses. It's not just for modeling. LEAP supports data management and documentation, results visualization, and stakeholder engagement. IBC, the Integrated Benefits Calculator, is a new part of LEAP. IBC calculates health, crop, and climate impacts from emission pathways calculated in LEAP. IBC currently works at the national scale for about 120 countries, with more coming soon, plus an additional new version that will work at the urban scale. Emission pathways are derived from national energy and emission analyses in LEAP, combined with rest of world emissions taken from the IASA gains eclipse scenarios. IBC translates emissions into population weighted concentrations based on runs of the GeosChem Adjoint model. GeosChem Adjoint is a global atmospheric geochemistry model developed by Davin Henzer, which is driven by meteorological inputs from NASA satellites. Finally, concentration exposure response functions are used based on the Global Burden of Disease store study to translate concentrations into premature mortality impacts. Other functions calculate crop losses and climate uh, temperature change impacts. Calculations all occur quickly with the results displayed within LEAP's results view. One of the most exciting aspects of LEAP IBC is that it can take detailed science as embodied in the GeosChem Joint model and the Global Burden of Disease risk, Relative Risk Functions and make them much more broadly accessible to planners in developing countries. You can see the LEAP IBC modeling pathway visualized on this slide. The transport modeling takes the emissions from LEAP and calculates population weighted concentrations based on the GeosChem adjoint modeling. And then health impacts are calculated based on the relative risk functions from the Global Burden of Disease study. So that's some of the theory behind LEAP IBC. Now let's look at how it works in practice. And I'm going to show you the results of a baseline uh, scenario for a fictitious country called Asiana. Think of Asiana as a medium-sized developing country with a rapidly growing population, and in the baseline scenario at least, very few policies to control air pollution. Here we are showing emissions of PM2.5 of particulates over time, which were calculated in LEAP within the sectoral structure shown in the tree on the left. You can see that emissions more than double with big growth coming in particular from a rapidly growing transport sector. Other major sources of emissions include the residential, charcoal making, electric generation and agriculture sectors. 
Now let's turn to the calculations done by IBC. The results of IBC calculations are all produced back in LEAP uh, and can be uh, examined under these branches called the indicator branches. Let's look at the premature mortality results. These are growing more rapidly than emissions, growing by a factor of three rather than a factor of two for emissions. Why is that? Well, in part, it's because the population is growing, so there are more people around to breathe in any polluted air. But it is also because this is a country that is expected to get significantly older by 2050, making people more susceptible to the diseases caused by air pollution. Now let's consider some scenarios that examine the potential for pollution abatement. I'm going to return to the analysis view and let's look at the list of scenarios that we've defined in this model. Here you can see a range of different scenarios. Some, uh, some of them are mini scenarios that model the results of particular policies or measures. And then one down here is an integrated strategy scenario, which combine the, combines those mini scenarios in order to create an overall integrated strategy. So let's look at some of the results for that integrated strategy. So here we are looking at the results for the integrated strategy scenario. You can see that there's dramatic reduction in emissions. More than three quarters of the emissions are avoided relative to the baseline scenario. LEAP has some very nice ways of visualizing uh, scenario results. Here, the dotted line shows you what you've avoided from one scenario versus another. Unfortunately, the picture is not quite so rosy when we look at mortality. Only about 15% of premature mortality is avoided in 2050. This is largely due to aging populations and the stable emissions coming from other countries and the natural background. But it's also due to the exposures occurring, which are occurring mainly on the relatively flat part of the relative risk curves coming from the Global Burden of Disease study. We can see that if we look at the, fi uh, the final slide showing the relative risk function. Here you can see that most of the exposure occurs on these flat parts of the uh, relative risk functions. So returning again to LEAP, you can see that the prospects for significantly uh, reducing air pollution health impacts are quite daunting when we consider only ambient air pollution. But in fact, ambient pollution is only part of the story. There are also significant impacts from household exposure, although obviously the two are interrelated. In the most recent version of LEAP, LEAP 2020, we have added a new capability to look at indoor and ambient air pollution together. The new indoor cal calculations are based on the HAPIT methodology developed by Kirk Smith and colleagues at the Clean Cooking Alliance. Kirk sadly passed away earlier this year. The methods are also closely aligned with those employ employed by the WHO. While HAPIT is intended primarily for studying the benefits of micro or village scale interventions, we have adapted them within LEAP for use in long-term national scale scenario analysis. So here we can see results for premature mortality for the integrated strategy scenario, this time including the results for indoor air pollution. Although the total deaths are now higher because we are including both indoor and ambient, notice that there is a bigger potential for reduction. Here we are able to get a 40% reduction versus the baseline, although that's still a 50% increase from the 2010 levels again due to the challenges of population growth and the aging of the population. In terms of what we mean by clean cooking, that obviously depends on the scenario, but we can see what that means in Asiana here on this screen. Notice how traditional stoves are gradually phased out in favor of cleaner stoves and especially LPG and electricity. So there you have it. A quick overview of how LEAP IBC can be used to examine the health impacts of energy and emissions scenarios and the health benefits of pollution abatement. Thanks for watching.